All right, we're over at the Daily Galaxy talking about aliens and fast radio bursts. That is exciting. Quote, fast radio bursts could be powering alien probes. Unquote, dash dash, Harvard dash, Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. All right, aliens. And there's this quote of Carl Sagan basically saying, hey, if we ever want to talk to aliens, all we got to do is bust out a radio telescope and then talk to aliens. Well, I paraphrase, but that's about it. I'll try and put it in here if I can. And I would imagine if an advanced civilization wanted to talk to us, they would say, oh, well, look, those guys must be extremely backward. So uh, go into some ancient museum and pull out one of those, uh, what are they called, radio telescopes, and uh, beam it at them. Stay cool. I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Fast radio bursts are exceedingly bright given their short duration and origin at great distances, and we haven't identified a possible natural source with any confidence. It's kind of like if you have a radio signal, you usually have a radio station. Does that make sense or did I oversimplify it? Said theorist Avi Loeb of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, an artificial origin is worth contemplating and checking. For the record, my own personal Thor News opinion is that aliens are already here and have been messing with our minds, our hearts, and our spirits for at least 70 years, if not longer. The search for extraterrestrial life has looked for many. The search for extraterrestrial life, the search for extra and trust, is it ironic that I came from, say, extraterrestrial intelligence? The search for extraterrestrial intelligence has looked for many different signals of alien life, from radio broadcasts to laser flashes without success, period. However, Newly published research suggests that mysterious phenomena called fast radio bursts could be evidence of advanced alien technology, period. I'd heard somewhere that NASA was scared, or NASA would be scared, and scientists would be scared to tell us about alien life because there's data that points to a civilization collapsing once they find out there is a more advanced civilization that exists. Sounds like hogwash or an excuse not to tell us, but I just thought I'd point that out. However, Newly published research suggests that mysterious phenomenon called fast radio bursts could be evidence of advanced alien technology. Specifically, these bursts might be leakage from planet-sized transmitters powering interstellar probes in distant galaxies. As the name implies, fast radio bursts are millisecond-long flashes of radio emission. First discovered in 2007, fewer than two dozen have been detected by giant radio telescopes like the Parkes Observatory in Australia or the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. They are inferred to originate from distant galaxies billions of light years away. Because it would be freaky if they were coming from like Saturn or Mars or Pluto, right? And I want to say again that with our entire world divided and conquered and mad at each other and like $700 trillion in debt, why are we so, why do we have such a boner to contact aliens or find aliens? Do we really think that bringing aliens into the mix is going to make things better? It would seem to me that we are prime for the plucking and I don't feel like being plucked, darling. I don't know about you. Loeb and his co-author Manavisi Lingham of Harvard University examined the feasibility of creating a radio transmitter strong enough for it to be detectable across such immense distances. They found that if the transmitter were solar powered, the sunlight falling on an area of a planet twice the size of Earth would be enough to generate the needed energy. Um, what? Such a vast construction project is well beyond our technology, asterisk, or our known public technologies, shall we say. But within the realm of possibility, according to the laws of physics. Yeah, well, the laws of physics say that using the combustion engine that uses petroleum for 134 years seems to defy the laws of physics. Like if science is so awesome and spectacular, why is it taking them 134 years to replace that thing? So, the you know, capitalism and laws of physics don't always go well together. You know, I mean, we still haven't replaced the Hubble. I think it's 25 years old. I mean, has your camera improved in 25 years? You know what I'm saying? Lingham and Loeb also considered whether such a transmitter would be viable from an engineering perspective or whether the tremendous energies involved would melt away any underlying structure. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Like, if we build the thing, it could help us contact aliens or it could melt our planet or the planet we used. Talk about scientific dilemmas. <sighs> no wonder they're so scared of nipples. Again, they found that a water-cooled device twice the size of Earth could withstand the heat. Okay, build me a small model, buddy. They then asked, why build such an instrument in the first place? And that's what I was asking. 
and you should think they would have asked that in the first place. They argue that the most plausible use of such power is driving interstellar light sails to go where to do what. We should fix shit here before we worry about spreading humanity. Humanity should be less like a virus and more like a imbalanced, awesome thing. The amount of power involved would be sufficient to push a payload of a million tons. Or about 20 times the largest cruise ship on Earth. Oh yeah, cruise ship. Like if there's one thing science is dedicated to, it's putting up like luxury cruise ships so we can all look back and enjoy Earth in the solar system, right? That's big enough to carry living passengers across interstellar or even intergalactic distances, added Lingham. An artist's illustration of a light sail powered by a radio beam, red, generated on the surface of a planet. The leakage from such beams as they sweep across the sky would appear as fast radio bursts. Similar to the new population of sources that was discovered recently at cosmological distances. To power a light sail, the transmitter would need to focus a beam on it continuously. Observers on Earth would see a brief flash because the sail and its host planet, star, and galaxy are all moving relative to us. As a result, the beam sweeps across the sky and only points in our direction for a moment. Repeated appearances of the beam, which were observed but cannot be explained by cataclysmic astrophysical events, might provide important clues about its artificial origin. Wait a second. Cataclysmic astrophysical events. There's a hell of a phrase. Loeb admits that this work is speculative. When asked whether he believes that any fast radio bursts are due to aliens, he replied, Science isn't a matter of belief. It's a matter of evidence. Cough, cough. Dark matter. Cough, cough. Gravitational lensing. Deciding what's likely ahead of time limits, the possibilities. It's worth putting ideas out there and letting the data be the judge. The paper reporting this work has been accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters and is available online. All right, well, I don't even know what the hell this article said. Anyway, it's talking about aliens and how we could contact them, or how they're already contacting us. Cue more Carl Sagan quotes, and maybe even Orson Welles. Okay, peace out. God bless everyone. In 1970, a study of the feasibility for picking up interstellar communication was made in California. Um, by a number of radio scientists there, as well as astronomers and others. It's called Project Cyclops. The outcome of that study was that the United States had the technical capability of building a large radio array, which would be able to scan the heavens uh, with fairly great resolution and, and power sensitivity out to a distance of many hundreds or possibly thousands of light years, uh, with the very distinct possibility of picking up a signal if it were there. Our present technology is able to detect ourselves anywhere in this galaxy of about 250 billion stars. Life must exist in the universe, and it must exist quite abundantly. So I think, first of all, there will be two great phases of this eventual time, which I think will come in 10 years or 100 years, or I don't know, maybe longer, when some satisfactory radio telescope work or something similar will acquire evidence of the deliberate beaming of a message, <clears throat> protracted message, out into space. So I think that will be easy and, of course, extraordinarily important. You will know very little of what that message says, save that it exists, and maybe some general geographic information from how far away it's coming, from what kind of a star, where. And then I think that you will have pouring into the recorders, pouring into the recorders, week after week, month after month, decade after decade, an enormous body of obviously interesting and meaningful pulses. And you'll be able to read them slowly and fitfully, because they will not be coded, but they'll be anti-coded. That's to say the people who designed them, the beings who designed them, will have thought very carefully how to make the maximum number of mathematical clues. The best way to single out the meaning will be made available. I think the most important thing that it will bring to us, if we can finally understand it, will be a description, if it exists at all, of how the beings disposing of great technology were able to fashion a world in which they could live and pers persevere and maintain something of, of worth and beauty for a long period of time. And finally, it would end our social and cultural isolation. To date, we have been bounded not only into our own countries and into our own small regions on this planet, but most assuredly within our solar system itself. If there are the tens of billions of other civilizations which the uh, predictions indicate might be, then we would join a larger galactic community. We'll be searching the planets, 
and the galaxies for clues to fill in the new patterns we're discovering. The evolution of evolutions that has produced us and the possible millions of other civilizations. Tracy!